This is truly an unprecedented situation. This virus doesn't discriminate. It attacks everyone. I want every American to be prepared for the hard days that lie ahead. The coronavirus has changed life as we know it across America. Oh, home sweet home. Oh, I missed your couch. It smells suspiciously like Jamie's fart. Alex, can you please romance the couch after we finished unpacking? Babe, we have two whole weeks to just sit around the house and unpack all day. Right now, it's just me and my couch. Fine, but don't come complaining to me when you can't find your lucky socks or something. Please, try to keep your mess out of the way so that we don't break our necks. Yo, man, what's up? Hey, you back yet? Yeah, we literally just walked through the door. Sweet. When can you come hang out and tell us all about Italy? Man, they got us quarantined for two whole weeks. Can't leave the house or we'll infect the whole town. Ooh, spooky. Oh, for real? You guys don't even have it. Take it up with the government, bro. 14 days just to make sure we aren't contagious or something. That blows. Be strong, homie. Thanks. Hopefully the time will go by fast. Well, when you're ready to come up, hit me up. You gotta tell me all about the European girls. Dude, I didn't even look at them. Jamie had my attention the whole time. Simp. If being in love makes me a simp, then so be it. Okay. Well, call me if you need to see something besides your TV or your girlfriend. Will do. See you, man. See ya. What did I just say to you? Uh, that you were gonna find my lucky socks. Did you hear anything I said after we walked in? Um, Forget it. I finished unpacking if you wanted to go to the room and take a nap or something. I know you can't sleep well on airplanes. Aw, thanks, babe. You're the best. Wow, you sound exhausted. Did you just get in? Yep. Finished unpacking. Looking for a new show to binge. Any recommendations? I have a lot of time to kill. Ouch. They got you quarantined? Yeah. I'm trying not to complain too much since this is apparently way more serious than we thought at first, but it's hard. Well, it's better safe than sorry. Yeah, this just could not have happened at a worse time. I thought about that. How's the trip for you? Did it help anything? It was good. We had fun, really. I just... I don't see any other way to make this work. So no change then. Do you still want to break up with Alex? It's not that I want to, it's just... We started off as friends and it was so good. And the first few years of our relationship were good. But now it just... Feels like we've outgrown each other. I guess that is kind of unavoidable. So what are you gonna do now? Wait it out. It's two weeks. How bad can it be? Jamie! Could you get me some toilet paper? We're all out. Sure. It'll all work out, hun. I hope you're right. Did you even check before calling me? Uh, I thought I remembered it being empty before we left on the trip. Okay, well now you know that there are three more rolls under the sink and I won't have to walk into that smell again. Aw, come on, you're used to it. You think I would be at this point. 
Alex, can you do me a favor? Hmm. I need to take a shower. Can you run the dishwasher? It looks like the last time we ran it, it didn't get everything clean. Hmm. I need a yes or no. Yeah, babe, I got it. Awesome. Uh, the dishwasher liquid is under the sink. Please remember not to use dish soap. We do need our deposit back on this place eventually. All right, here we go. Come on, come on. I see you. Stupid little butterfly, get over here, all right, all right, and... Oh! I'm always flying away. Hey, what's up? I don't know how much longer I can take this. It's only been a day and she's just being so... Alex! Ever since we got back from that trip, which, by the way, didn't fix anything, I still think that she's completely irresponsible and completely oblivious to everyone and everything. I don't know why I put this off for so long. It's not fair to her. It's not fair to anyone. I don't know why I thought a trip to Italy would suddenly fix things. As if seeing the Colosseum would suddenly make me see something I haven't seen in the previous three years of this relationship. I just... Fuck! I really screwed the pooch on this one, didn't I? I just kept waiting around and... The right time to rip off the godforsaken band-aid never came. And the waiting around just made the situation even worse. It's like, it's like I'm in a hole. And God thought it'd be a swell fucking idea to hand me a shovel and I just keep digging and digging and digging because that's all I can do. And by the time I realize it's too late, I'm stuck at the bottom of the hole and the only way to pull my dumb ass out is to yank on poor Alex's heart as hard as I possibly can and then live with her while she bleeds. Obviously that's not desirable, so I just keep digging. Whoa. Jamie, breathe. What happened? I'm very upset. I can tell. What'd she do? She used dish soap instead of dishwashing liquid. Okay, what's the damage? It looks like mall Christmas in my kitchen. Where is she now? I sent her away from it. I'll handle the mess. Honey, I don't think you're in the right headspace to handle it right now. I have to. She can't. I... Thank you for listening to me rant for a minute. I gotta go. Anytime. But please promise me, once the kitchen is clean, you'll take a nap. I'll try. Hey, dude. What's up? Just heard Jamie say that she wants to break up with me, and, and I don't know what to do because, because I love her so much, and 
I think that I made her hate me, and, and I don't want her to hate me because if she hates me, then, then it means that I'm a bad girlfriend, and, and I can't be a bad girlfriend because, because then she'll break up with me. Oh my God, calm down, back it up. Jim wants to break up with you? And it's because of something you did. Uh -huh. Well, what did you do? I, I think I ran the dishwasher wrong. Is that it? It might be part of it. Okay, then. What are you going to do? I don't know. I got an idea. What? Well, she's mad because you don't clean up, right? I, I guess. Well, sure that you're not sure how good you are cleaning up. Sure you're not a total spoiler, but remember why you guys work so well together. <laughs> but, but what if she doesn't notice? Or, or what if it doesn't help? But it will. You're awesome, and she just needs to see that she could be both awesome and clean. When she sees how good you are cleaning up, she'll remember how much of a great girlfriend you are. Okay, I'll try it. Great. You guys will be back to normal in no time. Thanks, man. I don't know what I'd do without you. Anytime. Good luck. Hey, I, uh... Sorry I snapped earlier. You okay? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I've... Never been better. I should go wash the dishes. Yeah, I'm gonna go wash the dishes. Alex, I just did the dishes. Oh. Uh, the carpet in the hall looks like it needed a good vacuuming. I'm gonna go vacuum. Alex, the hall isn't carpeted. Oh. I'm gonna go dust the duster. Alex, are you okay? You are not really being yourself. Did you eat some of that funny looking chicken on the airplane? Uh, no, <laughs> like I said, never been better. Okay, well, if you really want to help, you could take your luggage to the room. On it. Anything for you, babe. Right. Hey. Hey, it's been a minute. You calm down? Yeah, I, uh, apologized for snapping at her. You good? You sound confused. Yeah. The weirdest thing just happened. What did Alex do now? She offered to clean. That's good! Why do you sound so worried? She was just so anxious about it, like she was desperate to clean. Okay, that is a bit weird. So I'm not crazy? Talk to her. Something's up and you don't want to spend the next two weeks worrying about whether or not she's having some kind of mental break. You're right. I'm worried about her. I don't even think I've ever seen her look that scared before. Jamie, you sound like someone who doesn't actually want to break up with Alex. I don't know anymore. I... On the one hand, she drives me crazy, and I know I drive her insane too, but on the other hand, I love her. And all I really want to do is go into the other room and hold her and tell her that I'll be there for her through whatever it is she's got going on with her. What do I do? Talk to her. Do you really think that'll work? Oh my god, Jamie. Okay, I'll talk to her. Let me know how it goes. I will. Um, babe, I unpacked all my stuff and I also cleaned up all my hair off the shower wall. Hey, Alex, can you sit for a minute? Yeah, sure. I think we need to talk. Jamie, please. I'm sorry I've been such a screw up and, and I know you deserve better and, and I can be better. I just, 
I just want you to know that, that I'm willing to put in the work because you guys are so wonderful and I ask myself every day how I ended up with someone as, as amazing as you and, and I just want to be worthy. Whoa, Alex, what are you talking about? I heard you on the phone. I know that you want to break up with me. Oh, Alex. Sorry, I'm late. I had to pick up a package at the post office. Yeah, I sent it to you. Really? You, Luca? Don't thank me. It's from somebody else. I only forwarded it to you. And who sent me the gift? Come on, Violet. Who do you think? There's not a woman in all of America who would dare to send you a gift. It's not who would, but who could. Luca, you know no woman has that right. Have you forgotten about your wife, Violet? Surely she has that right. It's awful thoughtful of her, too, to pause in the midst of her antiquarian research in Rome and think of her young wife and send her a gift. She appreciates you more than I imagined. Under that grizzled and scientific exterior, she is a human being. I respect her for it. My wife. But then, why did you send me the gift? Oh, she paid me to do so. I received the package this morning with a letter. Shall I read it to you? Yes, but why didn't she send it directly to me? Ah, your wife is a woman with a curious and perverse mind, Violet. And despite of her interest in dead things, she's not without some insight into the living soul. I think it gave her a strange sense of pleasure to think of me as the bearer of her gift. Nonetheless, shouldn't we let her speak for herself? Yes. Read the letter. My dear young friend, I am sending you a package. Please, as a favor, deliver this to Violet, my wife. It contains a gift of an unusual sort you and she will appreciate. As you know, I am interested in the unusual, the unusual and the old. Yet, though I am an antiquarian, I flatter myself that I understand the mind of a beautiful young woman, especially when that young woman is my wife. I have found a mirror for her. Yes, a mirror. Calling it a mirror makes it seem commonplace enough, but when you see it, I do not think you will say so. It is not the kind of mirror that is ordinarily found in a lady's closet, yet it will give her an accurate reflection of her loveliness, as truly is. I found it. This will interest you in the catacombs. You wouldn't think the early Christians had so much vanity, yet it was a mirror into which the virgin martyrs-to-be of the time of Nero looked into each day. As they looked, let Violet look. Tell her I said, look long and well into this mirror and benefit from what you see. Humbly your friend, Winifred. Isn't that a nice letter? There's something about it that makes me shiver. Let's look. No, not now. I want to talk to you. Yes. You know what I'm going to say, and I've said it so often before, and I'll say it again. You know how much I've been trying to Look at No, let me speak. You aren't happy. You don't love your wife, and you're too young and beautiful to live without love. Please. I love you, and you love me. Why won't you give in to that love? Why are you telling me this? It hurts me. It's true. Does the truth hurt? Are you so warmed by your own obliviousness that the cold truth hurts? I'll say it again. I love you. Before you started saying things like that, we were so happy together. Before I spoke the truth of my own heart and yours, you didn't want it to be spoken. You didn't want to be told that you were in love. The reality is too harsh, too sweet. It scared you to think of it. You wanted us to sit forever like two lovers painted on a fan fixed in an everlasting and innocuous bliss. Oh, you've ruined that. You've upset me if it makes you feel better. 
wine and ruin your fantasy world. Love and all its flame and glory has torn you from it. Love has made you unhappy. You tremble at its approach and try to flee, but love has come for you. If only it had come before, before when, before you married that perverse old woman. If it had only come when you were unmarried, unbound, and free to give yourself to it. You would have given yourself gloriously. It's beautiful, but it is a dream. And the time calls for action. We love each other. We can take our happiness now. Will you do it? Will you run away with me? No. And if you cannot take your happiness, give me mine. If you cannot be a woman, then be an angel and lean down from your fantastic heaven to fulfill my mortal needs. No. No, not an angel, then a goddess. You want to be worshipped, you want to be adored. I will worship you, but not from afar. I will adore you in my own way. I will praise you without words, and you will be the answer to my prayer. Will you? No. No, no, no. How can you say that so easily? Your lips were not made to say such a word. They're too young, too red to say no to life. When you say that word, the world grows black. The stars go out, the leaves wither, the heart stops beating. It's a word that kills, it's a word of death. Do you dare say it again? Answer me, do we love each other? Yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna cry. Tears, tears are a coward's answer. Speak, defend yourself. Why do you stay here and deny yourself happiness? Why won't you come with me? I cannot. We say that, but it means nothing. The violent woman of few words, you know how to frustrate me. If only I could make you speak. If only I could see the thoughts that make you hesitate. Don't. My God! I wonder why I don't hate you instead of love you. You are incapable of action, almost incapable of speech. Your lips are shut tight against declarations of love, and when they open to speak, all they say is, Don't. Do you think scolding me is going to help? I gained the satisfaction of telling you the truth, that you have the most cowardly soul that was ever contradicted by a glorious body. Who would think, looking at you, that you were so afraid? There's no point in bullying me. I know that, Violet. It's the worst way to woo a woman. But I have tried every other way. I've pleaded and been answered with silence. I've wooed you with caresses and been answered with tears. I'm sorry, Luca. I want you to be glad. I am glad. Glad of you in spite of everything. Oh, gladness is something fiercer than that. It's so tame. If I could reach and ignite your soul. My soul is already yours. And your body? It's impossible. No, oh, it's not impossible. But I'll tell you what's impossible. This, for me to go on loving you and despising you. I called you today to make one last appeal to you. I don't mean it as a threat, but I'm leaving tonight. Forever. With you or without you. What? But, but I don't want you to go, Luca. And you'll miss me, I know, but try not to think about that too much. You'll find a new friend even if you decide against me. Uh, I have to decide now? Yes, right now. But how can I? Luca, I... I know it's hard, but I'm not going to make it harder, Violet. I have tried to appeal to your emotions when my appeal to your will was in vain. But I will leave you to make your own decision tonight. <sighs> Just come to me freely or not at all. You must have no regrets. I cannot do it. I will say that when I return, I will accept it as a final answer. Just give me a minute. I'm going to go get a drink. While I'm gone, you must decide what to do. Will you? Yes. If while I'm gone, you wish to recall my arguments to your mind, look in your mirror there. Your beauty will plead for me. As Winifred said, look long and well into that mirror, lady. Benefit from what you see.
God, give me a sign. I don't know what to do. Help me, I have to decide. Love has entered my heart. It is possible I cannot be a good woman any longer. You'll be kind to me and pity me and send me a sign. Perhaps you'll let me and my lover for your kindness. Maybe that's the sign. She said it would bleed for her. It is the sign. It's so cold in here. Where are the lights? I had never thought of death. My heart is cold too. The chill of the grave is upon me. Was I ever in love? It seems strange to remember. What is her name? I've almost forgotten. And she's waiting for me. I will show her this. We should have looked at it together. So Winifred had planned it. She wanted to cast the chill of the grave upon her love. She saw it all as though she had been there. She sent us this. How well she knew me. Better than I knew myself. An old woman's cunning. To stop the, my pulse throbbing with love and put out the fever in my eyes. The trick? Yes, but it suffices. One look into the eyeless face of death turns me to ashes. I'm no longer fit for love. Why hasn't she come back for her answer? <laughs> A present from a wife to a wife, a lady's mirror. What is it she said? Look long and well into this mirror and profit from what you see. My mirror is from catacombs. You look, you see the end of all things. I see that nothing matters. Is that your message? Why do you grin at me? You have to think that my face is like your face or will be in a few years. You mock me for thinking I am alive. I am dead, you say. Dead, like you. Am I? No, not yet. For a moment, a little lifetime I have life. I have lips and eyelids that are made for kisses. I have hands that burn to give caresses and breasts that ache to take them. My body is made to suffer the deep stings of love, and my skin will be a golden web woven of pain and joy. You were alive once, and a virgin martyr. You sent, denied yourself love. You sent away your lover. No wonder you speak so plainly to me now. Back, girl, to your coffin. You have decided? Yes, I have decided. I know it. It's no use. I'll just go. Wait! I've decided to go with you. Don't you understand? Take me. I'm yours. Don't you believe it? It's hard to believe, isn't it? I've been a child and now I am a woman. And you want to know how I became a woman? I looked in my mirror there. I saw that I am beautiful and alive. Tell me, Luca, am I not beautiful and alive? There is something different about you at this moment. 
I love you, Luca. Um, excuse me. Give me one second. Give me Poppy one second. I'm not, I'm not ready yet. Gotta get my. Uh, what's good with you, baby girl? What's happening? Come on, talk to me. Um, no. And secondly, just no. I would much prefer it if you didn't call me that. I actually have a name and it's... Uh... You're one of them girls. Oh my god! All right. So last time I told you about the best cover. All right, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep it above with you. All right. I like my girls more caliente. It makes things more interesting if you get what I'm saying. Listen, just me and you, right? What do you say? You, me, some whipped cream, maybe a little bit of Hershey's chocolate syrup in my brand new mattress. All you gotta do is say yes. Treat you like the queen you are. Oh, hell no. You know what? Forget this. Hello. Nice hat you got there. Is that tinfoil? Yeah, I, I use it to protect myself. You see, I, I use it to insulate my walls, my roof. I cover my windows with it. I even cover my phone with it. I'm probably going to regret this. Why do you have so much tinfoil around? Uh, because I'm not keen on the idea of dying from radiation poisoning or cancer due to the effect of 5G waves. 5G? You're worried about freaking... Are you at least somewhere near a cell tower? Explain. Are you near a cell phone tower? Do you live close enough to a 5G tower where the radiational levels are going to be significantly higher and more detrimental to your health? Do you live near a cell phone tower where it's understandable why you would go to such extremes? Look, honey, radiation waves can travel, okay? Why do you think we've seen so many less birds around? Pigeons, specifically. They are the most sensitive to this invisible cancer. Okay, that's all fine and dandy, but you still did not answer my question. I just want to know whether or not you live near a damn cell phone tower. I do not need to live near a cell phone tower to be affected by radiation, okay? It's like what they told you about that coronavirus thing that happened a few years back. It travels through the air. In fact, the two tie into one another. Oh my God, don't tell me. Don't tell me that you don't believe in the past health crises. Don't tell me that you think that Corona was started from radiation. And it, sweetie, I'm gonna stop you right there, okay? I'm not crazy. Corona was started as a way to force people into martial law, infringe on our rights, and lessen the population. Elvis caught onto it decades ago, and that's why the Illuminati put him in prison on Mars. Not to mention, we all know he followed the Gregorian calendar. So while we saw 2020, the Mayans saw 2012, also known as... Please don't say it. The end times. Oh my God. Why do people think like this? Don't judge a book by its cover, sweetheart. Yeah. I'll remember that next time there's a book worth reading. Whoa. What? If you think that the moon landing is fake, that Bush did 9-11, or that wearing a mask is the beginning of the new world order, please leave the state now before my last two functioning brain cells shrivel up. <laughs> no, 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 none of that, none of that. It's just simply that you're beautiful. Thanks. Uh, sorry for that outburst a few moments ago. <laughs> Truly, it's okay. A couple of dates? You could say that. The last two were taxing to say the least and the three in-person dates that i had yesterday were somewhat the same 
Well, six dates in two days, at least I'm not the only one having bad luck. Really? How many have you been on? Today, 13. In total, I'm a bit embarrassed to say. I don't want it to taint your view of me. Trust me, honey, there's nothing you could say that would render you worse than those before you. Well... 111. Dates? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> See, I told you it was embarrassing. Oh, no, don't be embarrassed. Perhaps some women were intimidated by you. You did pop up in the state wearing a nice shirt with bamboo and all. Uh, some might not be used to that sort of romantic gesture. Perhaps, perhaps. But enough talk about my failed post attempts. Tell me about yourself. Not too sure there's much to tell. Uh, I work as a paralegal at a local law firm, so I'm relatively busy. I have two cats and a puppy, and I spend my free time either reading or playing PUBG. Wow, that sounds lovely. Don't meet too many females who have a plan in life. Uh, where are you from? Texas, actually. How about you? No, no, no. Like, where are you from? Texas. No, like, what country are you from? America. Born and raised in America. Oh, really? What about your parents? Both of them are American. But if you're asking about my nationality, my father's Trinidadian. Oh, that makes so much more sense. No wonder you're so pretty for- Pretty for what? Hmm? I dare you to finish that statement. You're pretty for, uh, you're pretty. That's what I thought. Anyway, are you always so charming? Some women seem to think so. Others aren't too fond of my humor. Humor? Yes. For example, how many women does it take to screw in a light bulb? One one egg. Takes one. None, because they all work in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm sorry, was I supposed to laugh? I don't find it funny at all. In fact, I'd rather find that disgusting if that's actually something you think is funny. Yeah, I apologize. I suppose dark humor isn't for everyone. Dark humor? That wasn't dark humor. Hey, other people find it funny. It's not my fault you're getting offended by it. No need to act as like I'm stepping on your neck or anything. Stepping on my... Oh, my God. Mr. Uh... Forgery. Right. Thank you, Mr. Was not finished. Um, the name is Sebastian Reed Forgery. Mr. Forgery, are you understanding the disturbing connotations behind what you're saying right now? Uh, it was a figure of... Let me stop you right there. That was not a figure of speech. In fact, that was anything but. It's apparent to me that you're truly blind to your own ignorance, and it disgusts me. Here you are talking to a woman, a Black woman, and not only do you make references to misogyny, but to the brutal injustice done to an innocent man by a corrupt individual. What goes through your head when talking to those with different backgrounds than you? Do you subject them to the harsh stereotypes that have been inflicted upon them by society? Or do you actually take the time to distinguish their differences and get to know their personality like a proper human being? Do you allow negative experiences to control your future interactions? Or do you actually have the emotional and the social maturity to understand that one man's wrongdoings in the past cannot account for everyone you meet in the future? Do you understand these simple facts? Or does your privilege blind you? So not seeing what the big deal is here. People make jokes all the time, and some are better than others. It's not about telling jokes. It's about the disgusting tones behind them. Bringing awareness to something through comedy is completely different from making fun or dismissing it. You're taking things out of context. Let me put this in a way hopefully you can understand so that you learn one of the many ways how not to be an asshole. Do you judge a book by its cover or do you open it up to read the pages inside? 